Welcome to Study Time, a televised home learning program produced by Rwanda Education Board. Welcome into this TV recent running program. My name is the teacher Jamari, and today lesson is uh, physics for senior five. PCM, PCB, MPC, and MPG. You are most welcome into this reason. So today, we have unity number five. Number five unit is talking about complex electrical circuit. This complex electrical circuit, we have to recall on what we have studied in senior four. I hope you all remember. Remember what you have talked about, electric circuit, Kirchhoff's law, and these other questions that we are going now to see introducing our unit. So let's see the introductory uh, questions. The question number one, what is an electric circuit? Students? Electric circuit is a combination of the electric devices. So that is a configuration, it is a diagram, but into which we have a combination of these electric devices that are connected by the conducting wires. That is one combination of who? combination of, of devices Devices connected, connected by, by conductors. And uh, the question number two, what do you understand by electrical complex circuit? What is this question? That's good. So to answer on this question, you have to recall on how the Devices that we have to, that we, are, we, we have talked about into this first question, how they are connected. If you have the resistors connected in a parallel and in a series, and you are able to simplify this circuit diagram to remain with the one resistor, that the circuit diagram is what we call simple circuit. Do you understand? That's good. It means that if not possible for you to reduce this connection into a single resistor, then we have what we call complex circuit. So this is the answer for this question number two. I hope you are following me and writing down these explanations that I'm just telling you. Now, the question number three. Explain why we need the cutoff's law. Why these cutoff's laws are needed into this complex circuit. This is because they are enabling us to solve this problem. We need them because uh, we can analyze. So this is for three. We need, we need the, the Kirchhoff's law to analyze, analyze the complex, the complex circuit, circuit. So it means that when you have this C, application of uh, Kirchhoff's laws, then you are uh, having this uh, circuit diagram very easy for you, and you can solve that uh, question into which you have a, a complex circuit. Then let's see this, uh, uh, the statement of these laws. There are, uh, there are two, two laws. There are two laws. One is a law 
that we call the junction rule. That is one. And then a junction rule, junction rule. And this is what we, we call again the, the Kirchhoff's uh, first law, but this is the current, current rule, uh, current law. So this is state that, state that the current, the sum, the sum of current, current into a junction or a node equal, uh, equals the sum of currents currents out from the node. Now, students, when you simplify this, you have the current in equals to sum of current out. This is what we have, uh, again, uh, just telling us what is this first law. Then, the second law, it is again given to you as this one. It is the, a law that we call the law. Law. And this is the, the Kirchhoff voltage, voltage law. Or it is, this is the law, it is the, or you can now say it as a KVL, that is an abbreviation. And then this is, uh, states the, it talks about the conservation of who, Energy. This energy that we are saying is Z in electric potential energy. But for the first one, it is a conservation of who charge. Do you understand? So this time now, for the low plural, it is said that the sum of who or the potential difference around a closed network around a closed circuit equals to zero. Do you understand? And then if you want, you can now say that the sum of electromotive force into the circuit equals to the sum of potential differences that we have into the network. Now, this what I'm saying here is that the sum of all the electromotive force around the given network, when you say that this electromotive force equals to zero, in another words, what you have by this side, they are also into this side, and then you have equals to zero. I hope you understand this now. So let's change this explanation now into the activity. First, we have the first activity here. Activity number one is about... Again, to recall how current may now be equal according to whether it is passing or where it is coming from. The activity here, we have a circuit diagram. We have 12 volts, we have 8 ohms, we have 5, we have 3, and these are connected in parallel. You hope, I hope that you remember. And, and then you have this 6 ohms. And the question here is now to use this diagram and then to answer on this given sable question. The current is at point A. Point A is there. The current at point A, you have to just complete whether it is greater than, equal to, less than, to the current, uh, to the current I at a point B. What can you now choose between the two? So it means that we have now to see this is the current and that is from A and then we will have to compare it to the one at B. So it means that here, you don't have a note to guess. The, that is the current that is going now, it is coming back. Uh, no, it is continuing to that uh, resist and then this is going now to be equal. Do you understand? That's good, student. Now you have to continue with the question number two. Here, 
the kind I at B is the, mm -mm -mm, the current at E. What do you think? Yes, good students. So I hope that to answer again this question, let's start. We have the B here, and then where is the E? E is there. Now, according to this diagram, as what we see when a current from C is reaches, just reaches to D, and then when it reaches to this point, this is the junction. It is dividing itself according to the resistors that we have here. And then, remember the definition of a resistor. Resistor is the opposition of the electric charges in a conductor. In another word, these are the electric charges that are moving. When they reach this C resistor, they are now being opposed in order to continue, but then when they, got, when they get out from this resistor, then they are free to move. Do you understand that? This is what we are saying as opposition means here. If you have this high opposition, means the current is now being slowed down. But here now the current is higher than what we have there. But we are comparing this current to that current. And here it means that this time here the current is greater. Why? Because the current that is reaches here it is dividing itself into two. Then it is higher than that one. Get that. Now the current I at G, G is here, is greater than, equal to, less than, to the current at F. F is there. You see G and the F. Then what can you choose between the two? So I think... What you see here, this current is, as what I have said, it is very high. It is higher than the one that is passing there. Why? Because this is a high opposition to the flow of the electric charges. It is being slowed down, but here it is, it is not being slowed down as how now here it is slowed down. That's good. Here now it is rest done. And then the last one here, the current I at A, where is it? A now, A is there. Is it greater than, equal to, less than, to the current at L? Where is L? L is this one. Now there is I, there is A and L, the current. What do you think? The current will be equal. So here now we choose that is equal. We have the equality here that we have now to complete. Then, students, there is an activity number two. Activity two is, you can read it, and then it is very simple to be answered. Find the current Ix. Ix is here, and its direction. There is a suggested direction here. Now, students, how can you find whether this is really a correct direction you have now to solve. Do you understand? So let's apply the junction rule that we have explained there, and then we find the current find the current intensity and and the direction. So what do we have here? So we have said that the sum of from the junction rule, junction rule, what do we have? We have the sum of all currents that is in the junction equals to the sum of all currents that is out from the junction. And then here we have it. In currents, it is there. The, there we have a three plus two that is in the junction. And then here we have uh, ampere. This is equal to uh, to seven. Then plus C I X. Do you see that? That is going out to be again in ampere. And then what else? What is next? Here you find five ampere, which is equal to uh, 
uh, here it is 7 ampere, then plus Ci, of course, x, which is going out to be expressed in 2 amps. And uh, this time you find the Ix equals to, to 5 ampere minus Z, uh, 7 ampere. And uh, this is the minus 2 ampere. This is the, the magnitude. But this negative that is here is telling us that the diagram has to be recorrected. Recorrected in terms of direction of this current, and then if we show that we have I equals to 2A. Then the magnitude is 2, but the negative there shows that we have to change the direction of this current to be the one input. Do you understand? That's good. And let's now have uh, uh, the continuation up to the problem solving about the application, the real application of these Kaffer's laws. These laws, they are applied into this activity number three. Let's do it together. Using uh, Kirchhoff's laws, Kirchhoff's rules calculate the currents I1, I2, I3 in the three branches of the circuit in the figure below. This is the diagram. So I hope you see the diagram here. So then let's use this diagram to solve the First, we need now to just to set up where the junction is, and then we apply this junction law. Where do we have that? Let's set them. We have, let's say that we have this direction to be this, and because for this one, uh, uh, let's suggest that the current is moving uh, to the clockwise, and the Downward here follows this direction, then let's move it. It just let's say that is moving to this direction. And then we have a loop one, and this is a loop B. This is A and B. And the direction here means that we set it to be this one. And let's now have the, let's name this currents. So think that here you have I1. And then here you have I2, and then this other next one can now be I, I3. So then we have, have here I, I3. Then students, we have this junction rule there. It is I3 equals to I Two plus I one. I hope that you are following. Are you all following? Huh? So you have now to state this rule number one, and then it gives you this uh, currents. And then another one. It is where you have uh, there. You have uh, E. Let's move this for A. For A, what do we find? We find there is E. Two, then you move to that. This is the current I3. Then you have uh, this I3, then times the 41. Why 41? Because there is this two resistors. Even if this one is the internal resistor, but they are connected in the series. And then we have to, uh, to, to, to find the result by adding the two resistances. Then we have uh, to go up there and we find that is minus Z, minus 30, that is I, I1, then 30. This is equal to zero. And then for B, what do we have? We have, uh, uh, what do we have there? So look, there is this E2 and then I go around, that is the minus I, 3, then 41, uh, which gives uh, 
And then when I continue, I reach that is the plus E1. And then from that one, I have the minus Z. I, uh, that is I2, then this is the 21, which is equal to zero. So are we together now? Yes, students. Then let's have a, just a solving of this equation by substituting this EMF that we have, like this E2, and then we substitute what we have, and then we solve the system of two equations, and then we find the unknowns. So here we substitute. This E2, there we have found that is equal to, that is equal to 45. This is 45, then minus Z, that is 41, uh, I3, minus 30, I1 equals to zero. And another is Z. Uh, here we have E2, that is Z, again 45. Then let's go to this one, we have a plus C. Uh, what is there, it is 80 volts. And uh, this one there with that, uh, minus 41, I3, this gives the minus Z. Uh, 21, I2, uh, this gives a zero. So as you, what you see, it is a system of two equations. But let's see, let's arrange this. Arranging these equations, then we find that is the 41, I3 plus C30, I1 equals to 45. Because you have a negative with a cancel out with when you move that 45 to that side. So I hope you are now working uh, just with all of this on your draft. And then we have to also to find, from here the sum will give uh, 125, and then for that one you have the 41 I3, uh, then plus C, 21 I2, this gives, this goes there to find 125. So, and uh, let's substitute this into the equation. What do we find? This is 41. Then we substitute, that is the I, uh, I2 plus the I1. And this is the plus 30, I1 equals to 45. And uh, this is 41, I2 plus I1. This is the plus uh, 21, I2, which is equal to 125. And then let's see, solve. But first we arrange this, and then we find, mm, we find, did you solve that? Okay, so let's, uh, let's, let, let us arrange this. So here we are going now to find there is the uh, 30 I1 here, and there is the 41 I1. When we, we add this to that one, we find 60, that is the 71 I1, then it plus the 41 to that, to, to that I2, that is the 41 I2, which is equal to 45. And then another one, here we have a 40, one into this, do you see what we find? It is 41. And when we add to this one, it will be uh, 62. And for this one remain, that is the 41 I1, then plus C, uh, plus uh, 62 I2, here which is equal to 125. And then we find a system of two equations with the two unknown. Unknown, it is I1, and then I2. Let's now solve this. When you solve this equation, you can end up determining the Google calculation. So, I have a calculator here. So, this calculator, I have to enter the, uh, what I have. So, as what I have said, I have uh, the two unknowns. Okay, so let me show you how now I'm doing this into my calculator, right? So here's the thing. Uh, so first of all, uh, let's 
uh, let's do this. And okay, so I I want you now to just to follow. I hope that you see this is the mod. I press on the mod here. And then when I find the, just again, I continue to mod, and then I find their equation. This is my calculator that I'm using, okay? So then when I have this equation, I press on one. After pressing on one, I have a place on two. And then what is next is now to enter. I have a 71, then a place on equal. I have a 41, then I place on equal. I enter that 45. There, then equal, I go to question number, to equation two, then I place on, that is 41, I place on equal, I place on this 62, then I have this, and then 125, then I find the I1, this means that I1 here would be equal to 80, no, no, that is negative, 0 0.80. 86 ampere. That is one. Then I2. You know why I'm doing this? Because this is mathematical processes. And you know from mathematics, you know how to solve that equation using the different methods. But let's be quick and then use a calculator because it is a way that is uh, making easy our work here. So then we have uh, number two. You place on the equal again and you find... 2.58 uh, ampere with the two pl decimal places. Because we find this, then I3 will now be equal to I, remember. Then this will give, uh, this is the 2 plus 0.58, then A, then here minus 0 0.86 ampere. Then what do you find as, e, as I3? So let's... Uh, find that, so we find that is uh, uh, 2.58, then minus 0 0.86. What we find? We find 1.72 ampere. This is the answer here that I have from calculator. This is what I did. But after we determine this occurrence, we have now to do something on the current I1. Do you understand? On I1, we have determined it to be negative. Do you remember what we did there into that uh, activity number two? Into that activity number two, we have changed the direction of that, but changing again the negative into positive. It means that the current I1 will now be equal to plus 0 0.8060 ampere. This means that into our diagram, we have now to say, okay, the current is now, what we have called the direction of that current I1 is now downward. And then when we give the direction in here, we can now say, okay, it is to the left, toward this 30 ohm resistor. And then the other current here, that is I2, this is the remaining as it is there, uh, 58 ampere, and the last one is the I3, which is equal to uh, 1.72A. So this is the current that we were asking now to determine. Now, students, let's do this homework. I'm leaving this homework to you and solve the question here. Please use this diagram to determine the magnitudes and directions of the currents through R1 and R2 in a given diagram. And remember to add on some other questions. Then we end up our lesson of today here and to meet again by the next time into continuation about this unit. Thank you very much for having me today. Stay home, stay safe, and keep revising more about this complex electrical circuit. Bye-bye.